Hello, BookTube. I have some odd mail for you today on this, uh, what day is today anyway? It's Wednesday. It's very cloudy. It was rainy all morning. It's, it's not particularly raining now, although the air is filled with moisture. If you were to walk around outside, as I know, because we just did, you would come back wet. You wouldn't be soaked. You wouldn't be dripping like in a normal rainstorm, but it's a, it's a very rainy day. The air is full of rain. Uh, that has caused a, a battle of wills that is now going on for about 10 hours between me and the bee, uh, who does not like rain at all. She hates it on every level and refuses, really wants to refuse to, to have anything to do with it. She is trapped at the, you know, the steps outside. She is trapped every single time by two horrible forces, despite how willful and, and uh, strong-willed she is, she wants to do what I want. She, we're friends. She wants to please me as much as I want to please her. But on the other side of that, she doesn't like going out in the rain and actually wants to say no. So that's been a trial, and that trial is continuing, because if you look at the radar map, you will see a blob of moisture that is working its way past the eastern seacoast. It's slowly heading out to sea. And then there's a little trough, and then there's a much bigger, a much bigger blob, huge, a gigantic blob that is coming up behind that. So we'll get a little respite, and then it'll just be even worse. Uh, but there is still mail rescued from the soggy front porch. Uh, and the reason I call it a little bit uh, odd is because I don't think there are any books in this mail hall. <laughs> we shall see, but I don't think so. There are three periodicals to start with, for instance. There is the uh, the Martha's Vineyard Gazette, uh, black and white newspaper for the, the island of Martha's Vineyard. Look at that. How Look at how lovely that is. There's the Vineyard Ferry. Takes you to and from the island. Uh, this Most people, when they get the Gazette on the island, they flip immediately to the back, to the three columns in the back about outdoors, about birds, and about gardening. Uh, the gardening, the vineyard gardener is not just about gardening, it's very opinionated. Uh, but in this case, also, you can go to uh, the inside of the paper to the vineyard bookshelf. A uh, regular feature that the Gazette has, uh, that for years now has been occupied by your school. <laughs> the vineyard bookshelf is the name they give to their, uh, to their book reviews. And this time around, it is yours truly. Uh, which is very nice. Uh, always nice to appear in the Vineyard Gazette. Uh, as the uh, season picks up, so will the books covers. The books covers will also pick up. It's a, uh, as I mentioned many times before, it's a decision that all book section editors have to make. I knew about that even when I was observing it uh, from afar. I am no longer observing it from afar. I am now. I'm now in the whole game myself. But for, even when I was. Uh, was only a freelance book review and not anything else. Uh, it's, a, it's a choice that you have to make. If you're a book section editor, you have to decide what kind of a section you're going to have. And the, the, uh, the Vineyard Gazette book section editor uh, decided that he wanted local books. It's a local newspaper. The Vineyard Gazette is a local newspaper. Uh, so uh, that's what it does. So as you've seen on this channel over, over time, the author has to have a connection with the vineyard, or the book has to be about the vineyard, something like that, uh, in order for it to be considered. But when it's considered, it comes to me. <laughs> so that's wonderful. It's nice to see. I've clipped it out. It will go in the, uh, in the journal. Uh, then we also have uh, the Bedford Times Press from Bedford, Iowa, in Taylor County. This is a small regional newspaper, uh, local newspaper, very, very local. Uh, the, the front cover there is about a local taxidermist who's doing booming business. Uh, but you have local profiles like that. You have tons and tons of local sports coverage, the high school kids, the local urchins, uh, and lots and lots of other stuff as well. There's only one thing in the Bedford Times Press that is not local, and that is me. <laughs> that, is, that is yours truly. Uh, always nice to get newspapers in the mail that have you in them. And the Bedford Times Press every week uh, runs my book column. Uh, and they give me, as you can see, a good long length of space there. In this column, I write about uh, taking stock of the, the fact that the year is a quarter over in terms of my reading. And I go on at a thousand words, which is, uh, which is really, really nice. That's a really a, lot, a nice, generous space. Uh, and I want to point out, uh, if you have a local newspaper like the Bedford Times Press, and you want my column, feel free to email me. <laughs> feel free. I always say... Uh, that you are free to go to the Bedford Times Press website or the Lennox Timetable, where my column also runs, and uh, get a subscription. 
But I always caution you to do that because it's a local paper. I'm not making, I have no illusions about that. It's a local paper, which means the only thing you would be getting it for would be my column. Now, if that is okay with you, if you want to do that, you can't get it anywhere else. Uh, then by all means do, and by all means let the editor know that that's what you're doing. <laughs> that always helps. But if that seems like too much bother and you have a local paper and you know the person from church or PTA or whatever who runs it, feel free to let them know. My rates are quite reasonable and I would love to appear in your local newspaper. <laughs> I would love to do that. This is an all-purpose, general interest book column at about 800 to 1,000 words every week. I have to think there are a lot of local newspaper editors out there who would like to have that that kind of extra content and maybe don't know that it's theirs for the asking. <laughs> so feel free to email me. Um, and then the last periodical we have is slightly bigger than the Vineyard Gazette or the Bedford Times Press, and that is the TLS, the London Times Literary Supplement, a great literary journal that is uh, wide-ranging and uh, that uh, has a letters column. I actually kind of thought that this, might, that this periodical might be a Steve's clean sweep. Uh, because I wrote a stinging letter to the editor, to the TLS, just the other day. Maybe they just haven't had time to run it, or maybe they're not going to run it. Uh, the letters column is always a lot of fun uh, for the TLS, but so is the NB column in the back, uh, which takes uh, sarcastic looks at various literary things. And there was a thing here uh, that I loved. It's exactly the sort of thing you can count on the NB column to do. They're talking about Calm to a Bean. Uh, the, the Irish novelist, uh, and they say that he has won this year's Rathbones Folio Prize for his novel The Magician, a novel described in this paper by Michael Hoffman as, quote, soap opera, tedious and poorly told and lacking insight and accuracy and, uh, and accuracy to them as no, breathless and arbitrary and inconsequential to others. <laughs> That's what the Times Literary Supplement critic said. Uh, they go on. Another critic, Tessa Hadley, disagrees. She had already called the magician, quote, a masterpiece well before as chair of the Rathbones Folio's Judging Society, announcing that it had won the prize, which happens to be 30,000 uh, pounds. Tobin's previous novels included The Master, now available with an introduction by Tessa Hadley, <laughs> and Nora Webster, quote, it does everything we asked of a great novel. And who's that quote from? It's Tessa Hadley writing in The Guardian. <laughs> when the New Yorker profiled Tobin last September, they found somebody, guess who, to marvel at his ability, quote, with that striking minimum expressiveness, uh, to, quote, stick so faithfully to the inner qualities of his places and his characters. <laughs> we mar the, the NB column goes on, we marvel at such things too. Nothing against either writer, you understand, only isn't it somebody else's turn? <laughs> Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. They caught uh, just an obvious instance of what used to be referred to as log rolling and served it up. <laughs> that, is, that is just delightful. They caught Tessa Hadley uh, uh, hyperventilating praise for Calm Tobin three different places at three different times. <laughs> and I like also, of course, naturally that the focus uh, is on uh, a book that I didn't like, a book that I thought was very, very weak. I agree with the TLS's judgment in this case. Uh, but that is, those are the periodicals. And then there's a big box, and you may be saying, but, but Steve, if there's a big box, then why don't you think there are any books in this mail hall? Because I have a feeling. I have a feeling I know what this is. <laughs> we, we shall see. I could be wrong, uh, but I have a feeling I know what this is. And if it's what I think it is, uh, then you're going you're gonna to have to promise not to yell at me. <laughs> because uh, I did technically keep my word. <laughs> let's, let's, see if, let's see if I'm right. This is extremely well packaged here, which kind of confirms my suspicions. I have a feeling that I know what this is. Uh, and if I'm right, uh, yes, okay. I'm right. Uh, it's not, it's not a book. <laughs> uh, oh my, oh goodness gracious. All right, a great deal of care was taken to, uh, to send this to me. I really appreciate that. I really do. Uh, let's let's get the package opening down to a minimum, uh, so I can show you that I have been naughty. I have misbehaved uh, just a bit. I uh, bought a MacBook. <laughs> so I bought this. Oh, how pretty! What is that? Oh, what is that? I bought an old MacBook. Oh, how nice! This is an old MacBook Pro. 
I uh, I only have the one MacBook Pro. Now I have two. Big, big, thick thing. Look at all those ports. Good Lord. Apple has slowly got rid of oh, even as a CD player. Fantastic. This has to have been the last model that had those. Fantastic. Oh, incredible. Uh, and it's got all of these different ports for, for charging and everything else, uh, all kinds of connections. Uh, and I found this online for a steal. Uh, it comes with uh, its MagSafe charging port. What's that be? Huh? What's that? What's in here? Oh, what's that? Huh? Uh, it comes with its uh, with a MagSafe charging cord and everything, and the charger. Look at that. The charger's in perfect condition. Fantastic. I wonder if this is original to the machine or just somebody bought it new. Uh, bought just bought another one so that they. Uh, okay. Do you want to? I want to assemble that like that, all ready to go. Fantastic. There's the contact information for the seller. I might need that. Sometimes these older computers are uh, password protected, and the seller just doesn't know that. And, you know, they will either reset these things themselves, or they will have somebody who's reset them who will know what the password is. Totally useless to you. If, if it's password protected, you can't add anything to it otherwise. Uh, but I, this looks like it's in fine condition. Fantastic. And this was a steal. Just a steal. Uh, so I used what uh, I guess we could call Afghanistan money. <laughs> I used a small fraction of what we will call Afghanistan money, since my time was rather ruthlessly monopolized when I was a guest in someone else's home. I figured I owed myself a little, a little treat. And after all, what's life with only one MacBook Pro? <laughs> and I think uh, this, this is totally powered off. I'm going to have to power it up. Uh, and it, it doesn't look like it was shipped with any power, so I can't show you and I can't confirm. But if I remember correctly, this is earlier. This is the model that's earlier than... I have a very old MacBook Pro uh, that works perfectly. Just it, it, it is an absolute workhorse. You'd never know that I think, I think my MacBook Pro, my other MacBook Pro is from 2013. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is the, an older model. I, in fact, I know that it is because it's thicker and heavier. Uh, than mine is, uh, but they're they're absolute monsters. They're absolute beasts in terms of uh, not not you know not just falling apart over time. The reason I'm firmly convinced I've said this before on this channel. The reason why uh, you can get these things for dirt cheap uh, there are two reasons. One is uh, Mac aficionado perfectionism. If you have a MacBook that no longer f meets the qualifications of Mac aficionado perfectionism, then no Mac aficionado will want it. <laughs> like, for instance, this thing. I don't know if you're going to be able to tell there. It has a slight divot right there. It's barely noticeable. And it has some scratches on the bottom. That's all. The screen is perfect. The keyboard is perfect. Uh, that's one reason. And the other reason, I think the reason that drives the whole secondhand Mac market, is the graphics card. The graphics card in this machine, unless you knew how to open this machine and uh, and take out your soldering gun and fix it and swap it out for something else, the, the graphics card in this machine will not anywhere near handle the new video games. And I firmly believe that those govern the, the updates and, and, and turnover of these machines. And that is not true for me. I do not play video games. So I, I am going to be using this thing for word processing. We will see. Uh, oh, how nice. How very nice. All right, I will clean this up a little and charge it up, make sure that it has power, and then I will play around with it tonight when my work is done and see how good a MacBook Pro this is. This is the oldest MacBook Pro that I have. I now have two. And I'm pretty sure that this was the first machine that this model, again, I, I don't, it doesn't have power, so I can't turn it on and tell you, but I'm pretty sure this, that this model was the first one that was actually called a MacBook Pro. I have two MacBooks in the tech cabinet that are older than the distinction between MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. They just say MacBook. And they both work as well. They both still work, and they're 15 years old. Uh, but then after a while, Apple started to think, well, you know, this, this thing, this MacBook Pro has a huge amount of processing power and redundancies and memory and files and trees and all that that a casual user who just needs a netbook does not need. What if we were to make something called a MacBook Air that doesn't have all that over-excessive power? 
and sell it in addition to the MacBook Pro. And I think this is the first time they did that. I think this is the first model that was called that. But I'll be researching it to a fairly well. <laughs> so that is that is my mail for today. I was a little bit naughty, but I had my time imposed upon. And I oh, it was a tiny amount of money. It was I found it something for an absolute steal. You have to be very, very careful when you're shopping for electronics or books or anything else online. And I'm still learning. There are all sorts of lessons to learn, all sorts of, it's a wild west out there, and there are a lot of people out there who are literally, actively, knowingly trying to deceive you. But it doesn't look to me like I was deceived. Of course, the big, the big tell there will be, does this take power and turn on? Uh, but I'm pretty sure that it will. We'll see. I have the seller's card in case anything goes wrong. So that is your mail. <laughs> that is your mail for today. I have uh, some periodicals, including two out of three that my name is in, which is really nice. And I have a, a new MacBook. And I know exactly what I want my next purchase, my next tech purchase to be. I know exactly what I want it to be, but I'm going to wait a bit. I'm not, after all, I'm not out of control. <laughs> anyway, I'll wrap this up for now, but I'll be back. Thank you, book two.